Good morning, my darlings, and welcome to a new vlog. It is Sunday morning. I had every intention of going for a Peloton ride this morning, but Charlie just suggested that we go for a really nice long walk. So I think I'm gonna ditch the Peloton for today and go for a lovely walk. It is very, very humid today, pretty gray outside actually. Um, so today and tomorrow, where the weather's not gonna be that great, I am gonna try to be super duper productive, getting a lot of house organized done but also um, work. As I've mentioned a million times I do find it so hard to concentrate and especially to like stay inside on my laptop when it's glorious weather outside. I just want to be either working outside and I find that when I'm on the outside table I can't see my screen quite as well so I do find that I'm a little bit less productive um, or I just want to be gardening or sunbathing etc. So I do find it hard to be productive when the weather's glorious so I've got a little bit backed up um, from last week and I think it's going to be really lovely again from Tuesday onwards. So I need to have a really productive couple of days. Might just whack a t-shirt on top of this to go for our little walk. Can't be bothered to get changed. And I'm really happy with how my makeup turned out today. I haven't put anything on my lips just yet. But I've just been playing around with a couple of existing and a couple of new bits from code 8. I feel like this, where is it? This is a product that I absolutely love and rate so highly but I've never really spoken about it that much on YouTube before. It's their Perfecting Concealer. Seamless Cover Perfecting Concealer and it has this little sponge on the top here. It is just so creamy, never settles in any fine lines and really illuminating and just gives the most beautiful coverage so I always like to use that. I'd never tried their day to night foundation before but I popped some of that on this morning um, and their bronzer. I'm already a huge fan of their oops, <laughs> brow pencil and then I have a brand new of my favourite lip balm, my favourite tinted lip balm. This is the Lapisine shade which is just the perfect nude. I often have this in my handbag. Um, it's just great for topping up on the go. It is so balmy. So I'm gonna pop some of that on. My face is still a little bit puffy from waking up not so long ago But yeah, very pleased with how my makeup turned out today. It's just a nice kind of natural look I'm gonna pop on some of the lip balm and then we'll head out for our walk I now always have my Dyson fan on auto because then it's just like constantly purifying the air but I'm gonna blast it up to level 10, get it a little bit cooler in here while I find my t-shirt and then we'll go for our walk. <laughs> So I went for something a little different instead of a t-shirt and this is, I'm pleased to say, another incredible influencer fashion creation. This is a beautiful blouse from the lovely Alex Light's new collection and she has created the most spectacular range of swimwear and it's kind of like a capsule collection for beachy times and she has literally had every body shape and size in mind when designing the collection it is just so flattering she has posted so many images of so many different girls wearing her swimwear and everyone looks absolutely incredible she very kindly sent me over a swimsuit and also this really lovely easy breezy blouse it's one of those things that you just always want to wear on a holiday you know in the afternoon when you just want something to cover yourself up a little bit but still really nice and lightweight so i thought because it's so humid today that it would be absolutely perfect i don't really want to be walking around the village just in a sports bra but i don't want to be you know, getting hot and sweaty, so this is perfect. She's thought of loads of lovely design details. You've got the little loops on the sleeves here, really nice low casual v-neck, a um, little pocket here, and this material, I feel like it's just not gonna crease. It's that really great material that you can bung in your suitcase um, and not have to worry about ironing when you get to your destination. So I've just got that over the top of my sports bra with my Sweaty Betty um, Halle Berry leggings. I'm gonna grab some trainers and Let's go. Charlie's just gone to find Dexter, who's currently hiding behind the pond, and I thought I'd give you a super quick update down here at the kitchen garden. I just let out an audible <laughs> gasp because my incredible raspberry pink peonies are coming out, and they are so perfect. I have never seen such pristine flowers as this. Look how spectacular that is. I mean, that is just seriously beautiful oh my gosh I'm always torn do I leave them all out here or do I bring them out into the house thing with peonies is they don't 
regrow once you cut them, unlike a Cosmo, for example, which will just keep on flowering. But that is just so beautiful. This is going to be such an explosion of colour. There's still lots that haven't come out yet. Um, and all the white ones down there. There's loads of peonies down there as well. I'm still, this is still a work in process. As you can see, we've tried to make it quite staggered with the colour. So the alliums are starting to go over. Then it's the peonies and it'll be the roses. Oh, this is fantastic. I didn't realise. Jack, our gardener, must have popped back. She only lives in the village to put this protection on um, my French beans. That, oh, maybe it was mum, actually. Might have been mum. <laughs> but that is brilliant. My extra willow has also just arrived so I can protect this area properly. My broccoli is almost ready to burst out of these cages. I might have to think about what other solutions we can do to stop it getting nibbled and it looks like we're going to be eating lettuce for the rest of summer. The spinach in here again is ready to bulge out. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? back from the walk and we're just inspecting the herbaceous border that we installed over the last couple of weekends. It is starting to come into bloom including what can only be described as the world's most perfect rose. Look at this. Nature is amazing and it smells absolutely beautiful. You know I'm looking and I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my Chani and I are feeling much better now that we have had a pork bap each at Quince and Clover. Charlie was getting... Hashtag not an ad. Not an ad, why? Well, because we talk about Quince and Clover so much. But the funny thing is, I'm... Oh, am I allowed to talk about it yet? Yeah. So Charlie and I work with American Express quite a lot and they asked us this time to uh, talk about one of our favourite local businesses that we go to really regularly. So actually, I do technically have an ad coming up. Oh, that's true. Talking yeah. about Quince and Clover. Yeah. Anyway, Charlie was ultra hangry earlier because um, you've probably heard us talking about Felden Valley a oh. lot in my previous videos. It's our local golf club. Normally, we love to go there and midway through our walk, we get coffee, we get a sausage baguette or a bacon baguette, and guess what? They've stopped it. <laughs> it's one of those where I think firstly, it makes you grateful for what you get in London, because in London, business is on, on the whole hospitality, because it's so competitive, everyone sort of ups their game. Mm. And out where we live now, Felden Valley is a great golf course. I'm sure it's a lovely place to stay, <laughs> but the restaurant is not really run with a great deal of thought given to the local, people that live locally. Yeah. So like for dog much... walking and stuff, they now only do bacon sausage sandwiches for golf members. Yeah. So they're doing them, but we weren't allowed to have them. Yeah. So that was a bit, uh, uh, it was so a bit So Charlie annoying. was very upset not to be allowed um, a bacon. And I was Proper very upset not problem. to be allowed a sausage sandwich. And also we were the only people in there. So it wouldn't have actually made it very challenging yeah. to do it. Anyway, as Charlie said, first world problem, but I did have to deal with a very grumpy Charlie <laughs> until the last hour when he had his pork. Um, but, uh, silver lining, I got to try the pork bat from Quince and Clover, which oh, was fantastic. Yeah, Apologies for any vegans watching that had to just listen to all of that meat chat. Anyway, so we are now on our way to good old home base to buy the paint for the cottage because Andrew starts tomorrow and I'm very excited to be able to give you a kitchen update because Hammonds were here, was it last week or week No, before? the week before. I'm actually going to quickly take this opportunity to make an apology to anyone that has entered the Straw Top Cottage competition, which we had, I think, nearly a thousand entries because due to a few delays at the cottage, a lot of other work going on, we've sort of took our eye off the ball a little bit. We never really made a formal announcement because we were nervous about sort of people having July in their diary and then not being ready for July. But we have picked a winner. We will be announcing the winner when they confirm to me that they're available mm -hmm. in July. And hopefully they'll be visiting towards the end of July yeah. to be the first proper guest but I'm sorry to anyone that has followed and we will be doing a lot more competitions genuinely I think we'll probably be trying to do one every quarter for some capacity with the cottage mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be a lot more active on Straw Top Cottage Instagram from next week but it's just been incredibly busy with lots of other things going on and I feel like we're just constantly juggling things at the moment aren't we 
it is all quite overwhelming, but we have just got to home base. So we'll grab our paint and then we'll give you the update. Alan Titchmarsh over here couldn't resist getting a plant as well. <laughs> so we have made it back to Straw Top and we have progress in the kitchen. <laughs> I thought there would be a little bit more progress, but actually, when you look at it, the only real things left to go in here are the worktops and the cupboard doors, but they are the bits that make it obviously look more finished. But you can tell that a lot of work has been done in here and you can see how it's Okay, you're gonna have to use your imagination, but here is the current kitchen progress. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I mean, obviously it doesn't look particularly spectacular right now, but you can envisage, use your imaginations as to how this is going to look. You can see the lovely color of the worktops here though. So we did in, in the end go for um, green tea. This was our little sample block here. And now that the sun is coming in and shining, you can see some of the finished colour here. The light in this room, I think, is just absolutely perfect. We did go for a ceramic sink, a Belfast sink, to give it more of a country kitchen kind of finish. Obviously, we're going to be decorating um, all this back area. I can't remember if we decided we were going to get a splash back up here or not. If not, Andrew will be sanding it all down and creating a perfect finish. There's actually loads of cupboard space, which is great for pots and pans, plates food and things like that and we've got a really nice cornice up at the top here extractor fan we have got a brand new oven from capel i've heard such good things about this brand and we've also got our fridge from them and our dishwasher and our washing machine which i believe james will be fitting next week i think the hammonds chaps are back on friday to do the cupboard doors and the handles and the worktops and then we are nearly there We've just got back home again and in the three hours that we've been out, the peonies have now fully bloomed. Oh my goodness, these are quite an old-fashioned style of peony, less kind of, um, you know, the ones that you see in pretty bouquets that have like cloud-like petals. These ones have actually got a yellow inside, but very vivid colour. That is amazing how they've come out so dramatically. I mean, they're absolutely ginormous. So spectacular. my darlings it is now monday morning and what a glorious start to the week the sun is shining and i wasn't expecting it to be shining today i was expecting it to be a full cloud day so this is a bonus sunny day which is the best kind of sunny day i'm going to do a really lovely light fresh glowy everyday quick and easy makeup routine with you first of all i'm just going to pop on some spf really quickly um, while we chat this is La Roche-Posay Hyala B5 Aqua Gel SPF 30. And it's great if at this time of year you want to switch to something a little bit lighter, but you still want and obviously need that SPF. And it also sinks in really quickly, which is fab. Okay, there we go. So today I am gonna be doing a makeup look using products from Code 8, I showed you quickly yesterday some of my favorites and I am very happy to be working with them on this part of the video. I have got a discount code for you for 15% off, which is Josie15 and <laughs> just had to double check. That is valid from the 7th until the 30th of June. So perfect excuse to treat yourself. Code 8, if you are not familiar with it, I first discovered it actually in their beautiful boutique on um, in Burlington Arcade and I got to have a real immersive brand experience there. You're not overwhelmed with hundreds and thousands of products like you can sometimes be at makeup stations in department stores because they've really just kind of narrowed it down to the products that we actually need. A lot of the products are multitasking. Their whole ethos is kind of 
There is more to life than makeup, so let's make a select few products that just get the job done really well. You don't need to be a makeup expert in order to use them or apply them. I'm the first one to hold my hands up and say, I'm actually not especially good at doing my makeup. I'm just like your everyday person. I don't have any crazy makeup skills, but there are just certain products that I like and that work well for my skin and that I can create a nice, in my opinion, fairly pretty makeup look in like five minutes because to be totally honest, that is all the time that I really like to give to my makeup routine. Um, and Code 8 have really simplified the products. As you'll see now, they're just really beautiful, easy to use and give you the most beautiful finish. So Code 8 have really had everyone in mind when designing their products. This, by the way, is actually one of the most amazing products, especially if, like me, you just want some something that's gonna instantly give your skin a glow, a little bit of coverage, radiance, but without having to spend a long time applying foundation. This is their Radiance, and this is probably one of my top, top, top products from Code 8. Especially great on sunny days. You can apply it, of course, with a brush, but I like to apply it with the fingers, especially when I'm doing a really quick and easy makeup look. The way that their foundation is designed is that it's kind of in um, this absolutely beautiful tube, by the way, it's in a doe foot applicator. So if there are certain areas of the face that you do want a little bit more coverage, then it's really easy to spot apply as opposed to putting it all over the face. My shade is um, NW15. So they do consider all different skin tones and skin bases. So whether you have like a warm complexion or a cool complexion when they're designing their products. So you'll be able to find something absolutely perfect for your um, skin tone. I have a little bit of discoloration on my cheeks and on my chin. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more coverage there with this. I honestly don't know how my camera is still alive. It has fallen down onto like rocks and everything so many times <laughs> oh dear oh dear um this as with most code products is also super duper buildable everything layers on top of each other really nicely so it's very um so very versatile depending on the type of makeup look you want to create you don't need to buy loads of different foundations one for like a nighttime look one for a day look because all of these products are really buildable. This is the absolute perfect base for me for a spring or summer day. It's just so glowy, that Radiance um, foundation or tinted moisturizer is just such a glorious base and it just makes it so much quicker when you're not applying a full face of foundation. As I always say, my under eye area is my biggest area of concern. So I do like to add just a tiny bit of brightness and this product is without doubt my favorite under eye brightener at the moment. It is the Seamless Cover from Code 8. And I like to use the warmth from my fingertips. When I'm applying under eye product, I feel like it just blends in a little bit better. I take it all the way up here and just a little bit whatever's left on my finger over the eyelid too. And then my next step, as always, is bronzer. This one has a really lovely amount of shimmer in it. It's called the Summer Glow Bronzer, and I use the shade Positano. And again, it's just a really lovely natural shade that works for all different skin tones. My makeup always looks so much more contrasty in the camera than it does in real life. I am now realizing how many of my favorite products are from Code 8. This is their eyebrow pencil. I have the shade Medium and it is the closest to my actual brow hair color that I have ever found in an eyebrow pencil. They have a really wiry spoolie. So this is fantastic for brushing the brows up, which I like to do before and after brow product application. I just use a really, really light feather light stroke to create almost hair like um, hairs in my brows because I don't like my brows to look too heavy, especially after I've had my hair coloured. It can just be a little bit too intense. So I'm holding it quite far back and then it just enables me to get a really light flick. And then I go back with the spoolie and almost use it to kind of blend out 
the lines that I've just drawn in and this all just adds to that really natural finish. Okay, so now I would say we have got the basics covered and it's time for the fun bit, which is adding color. Now, as you might be able to tell, I am feeling very pink today. So I'm actually gonna draw the pink that I'm gonna apply to my cheeks. I'm gonna do that in my eyes as, or on my eyes as well. So this is the most beautiful but my camera really doesn't like focusing on it, blush palette. And I have the shade Mood Reflecting Cheek Palette in the shade Pink Beach, what a dream. And you have got a trio <laughs> of shades here. Now, when I'm applying it as a blush, sometimes I will pick an individual shade, sometimes I will swoosh it all the way around. I think I'm gonna go for this slightly more warm toned shade here today because it really does feel like summer and I like to smile and then just add it to the apples of my cheeks. Mm. Oh, that's gorgeous. And it does have just the softest touch of radiance to it, which just makes your complexion look so gorgeous, so healthy. And then I will take my eyeshadow brush and I'm actually gonna use the lightest shade to start with all over the lid as my kind of base color. And I'm gonna take it all the way up to the brow bone and actually focus it under the brow bone, which can help to lift that area, which is super flattering. I love it when everything ties in together. And then I'm gonna take the same shade that I used on my cheeks and with my eye open, I'm gonna do a kind of semicircle exactly where my socket creases, if that makes sense. Let me try and show you on camera. So I'm using my actual crease to do as my template, and then I'm drawing like a half moon shape, and this just adds the loveliest bit of definition. And then I'm blending it in the corners. <laughs> and trust me when I say I have no real makeup skill here. It's just kind of trial and error. And then without adding any more to the brush, I'm actually gonna wipe a little bit of product off because it's really beautifully pigmented. I'm gonna blend that all in, taking it very softly up towards the corner of, or the tail of my brow. And that's all I'm gonna do, so easy. I'm actually finding that the, the lashes on my left eye are poker straight at the moment, absolutely poker straight. So whereas my right eye, this one here, I can get away without using a lash curler. My left eye, they're literally like this, so I have to curl my lashes a little bit before applying mascara, thinking I might get an LVL lash lift soon. This is the Kode mascara, the most beautiful packaging. It just all feels so luxurious. And then this brush is quite a petite brush, so it's really great for like wiggling in at the base and coating at the lashes. And this is also super buildable. So you can see you just get a really nice, natural, separated lash finish. Or once it's dried a little bit, you can go in again and create a little bit more volume. So now we're adding the finishing touches and I'm gonna go back to the blush palette and I'm gonna take actually this really bright but also beautifully, I don't wanna say metallic, it's got a gorgeous radiance to it, this shade here. So that can be the most fantastic, oh my goodness, I've actually not used this as a highlight before, but that is like a pink moonshine, oh my goodness. Oh. This is so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And we have reached the piece de resistance, <laughs> my favorite product. Ever from Code 8, possibly my favorite lip product ever as well. I have been using this since I very first discovered the brand. Must have been about three or four years ago, I think. And it is, you guys know already, <laughs> I speak about this so much, the Code 8 Sculpting Lip Balm. Sculpting Lipstick Color Brilliance in the shade La Piscine, which I'm pretty sure means the swimming pool. Code 8 very kindly sent me a new one. I actually have my one of my original ones here. 
And I would highly recommend picking up at least five of these, one for every handbag, one for your makeup station, one for in the car, one for in the bathroom, because they are so gorgeous. They are ultra balmy, so comfortable to wear. I do have quite dry lips, um, but this is the texture and the luxurious feeling of a balm, but the color payoff of a lipstick, and the shade is the most flattering shade I have ever experienced in my life. Literally the perfect balance between a pink and a nude. And it's one of those amazing products that you don't need a mirror because did you know, etiquette wise, you're allowed to reapply your lipstick at a dinner table as long as you don't require a mirror. So it's fine to do it like if you just get out your handbag and go da 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 da. But if you need to get a mirror out, then you should go to the ladies room. That is the correct etiquette. You don't need a mirror with this. It's just so quick and easy. Oh. It literally feels like I've just applied a lip balm. This is, if I was to name my top 10 makeup products ever, this would be one of them. It is fabulous. I would highly recommend using my code on this, if nothing else. But I would recommend all of these products. They are sensational. You can get code 8 on Net-A-Porter as well. And yeah, my code is valid until 30th. So treat yourselves, darlings. I know that so many of you are in love with this already. This is a great opportunity to top up. Um, but yeah, that is my super duper quick and easy glowing pink spring no fuss makeup look. I hope you enjoyed this little mini get ready with me. I'm now going to put a load of deep conditioner in my hair because this is actually my first hair wash <laughs> since I had it coloured. Um, so we're going to need to put a lot of conditioner in. I'm not going to blow dry it because I'm just going to sit outside on my laptop and let my hair dry naturally. So that's my plan this morning. I think sometimes it's nice to show you in non-direct sunlight. If anything this might even look even better because the lighting is a little bit soft. You can see the highlight shade a little bit better here and the lip, I keep wanting to call it a lip balm because it really does feel like a lip balm but um, you can see the lipstick colour a little bit better. You can see that the brow product, the shade is just so perfect for me. Um, the blush it just gives the most natural, beautiful shade. I hope all of this footage is actually going to work, seeing as I've dropped my camera so dramatically halfway through filming this. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. It is so beautiful, the perfect base, everything. I'm having a fan girl moment. <laughs> I have just taken a delivery from Cherries. They actually reached out to me on email and asked if um, I'd like to try their new service. It's essentially your everyday kind of essentials for less delivered to your door, which is a great idea. Anything that brings convenience, I'm always very, very happy to try out. Um, and they've very kindly put together this bundle for me. So I thought I would show you some of the bits and bobs you can get from there. I'm very impressed that they've got some of the nice eco brands that I like, like Ecova, I actually use their, um, what do you call it, liquid detergent in our washing machine, and they've got obviously the very liquid. Um, some other cleaning essentials like the Minky General Purpose Cloth, Duster, um, grill and pan scrubbing items, cleaning cloths. I have a feeling this is the product that Mrs. Hinch goes wild for. <laughs> I never actually really got on the Mrs. Hinch bandwagon, but I have definitely heard her talking about Minky before. And then these, I've definitely spoken about these before on my channel. These are actually amazing if you want to really go super eco with your washing, and I can confirm they work amazingly well. Basically, the eco egg. There we go. I feel like this one's actually bigger than the one I had before. You pop this in your washing machine, and it comes with... Um, um, these little pellets and then you can also buy refill pellets. You pop the pellets in there, pop it in the washing machine and then this does all the job of a detergent and a softener so you only essentially need to put this with the pellets into your washing machine and if I remember correctly I think it lasts about 30 to 50 washes and you just leave it in there and then you don't need to have the plastic and the expense of classic um, washing detergents. So that's amazing, good to know that they sell that on cherries. Oh, I have a little note here. We know you love gardening, so we've included some of our gardening range. That is so sweet. And then, when, oh, look at this. We've got a code, 20% off with Josie20 when you order via the Cherries app. That is amazing. Definitely make use of that 
darlings and look at this they have very kindly sent over some of these really sweet terracotta um plant markers which is amazing i'm actually going to go and pop these down in the garden now because mine are all just like handwritten diy versions at the moment unfortunately onion and parsley did not survive the journey but they're just you know thin ceramic so they are obviously quite delicate carrot strawberry lettuce cucumber that is so so lovely this is literally making my mouth water auntie's chocolate steamed puds oh my goodness we've even got some pinot grigio some dog treats a really lovely bundle so thank you cherries for sending that over just heading down to the kitchen garden with my pink scissors to collect my lunch let's get some nice salad leaves They're so massive, literally three leaves is all I need with my omelette. I just said to Charlie he needs to get Guinness World Records on the phone because I'm pretty sure this is the biggest spinach leaf to have ever existed. That is incredible. Charlie also bought some salads from Quince and Clover. So there we have my lovely, whoops. So there we have my lovely local luncheon. Eggs from Jack's Hens again from the village, the leaves from our garden, and a local salad from Quince and Clover. Yum yum! Well, that lunch was absolutely scrumptious, and now I am drawn over here to the cake um, display area. As you can see, I have these little um, kind of sample bits of different cakes and these were very kindly sent by That Cake which is a very small independent company based up in North Yorkshire. A couple of years ago they introduced postal cakes so these literally came through the letterbox which is absolutely amazing. Such a lovely gift or little treat for yourself. This one it looks like it's red velvet which is my all-time favourite. Literally making my mouth water while I'm talking to you so I'm going to enjoy this and I shall report back. I don't know why, but I find this little boy's teeth just so funny and cute. And he's kicking me while I'm talking to you. You see, have you checked with my agent? Mm, thank you. Here it comes, there you go. <laughs> You're a little teeth kicker. Gosh, can you believe that GHD is 20 years old? That is so crazy. They have sent a lovely delivery. I've actually already taken a few of these bits and bobs around the house, including a limited edition new pair of stylers. They have sent over a bottle of champagne, a GHD garment bag, and this book, which has got inspiration from styles throughout the years. I wonder if... You guys also remember your first experience or your first discovery of GHDs. I remember a girl in my school, her name's Ellie, she always used to straighten her hair every single day with non-GHDs. That was pretty much her hairstyle. <laughs> and she'd always say how long it took. And then I remember when she got GHDs for either her birthday or for Christmas, it was just such an absolute game changer and she would not stop going on about how amazing they were. And I think it was actually a couple of years later that I first tried them. In fact, I think the really old fashioned GHD Max were my first stylers from them. But my goodness, happy birthday, happy 20th birthday to GHD. Hello, my darlings. Apologies for the very straw-like hair. I definitely should have used a purple shampoo this morning. This often happens after I get my hair coloured. It goes a little bit yellowy and that is just how my hair reacts to the bleach and that is when I will have to use my Red Ken Blondage because personally I prefer it to be almost like a silvery colour as opposed to yellowy and where I've not blow dried it today it really has gone rather straw-like. But I have just received a couple of deliveries, um, bits, bits, bits which bits which I have 
purchased lately and I thought I would go through them with you. I never spoke about this dress previously but it is from a lovely brand called Muse and Moda and it is literally my favourite kind of silhouette. You've got these little bows on the sleeves, this smock detail on the bodice and then the fabric is just absolutely gorgeous. So I just wanted to give this a little shout out before I get changed. But my order from Sorry darlings, my battery just died and I have no idea <laughs> what sentence I was midway through when it decided to die. Some of my batteries, I swear, they only work for about two hours and then they are completely useless. But anyway, I have just received some of my purchases and I thought I wouldn't do them with you. So first of all, this is something that I did share on my Instagram stories when I saw it. I actually did a little poll as to which colour I would get. So I ordered this pair of Nicholas Kirkwood sandals from Farfetch. My Farfetch discount code for 10% off is still live. It is JosieYT10, I think. It'll be on the screen. Um, and I'll leave a link to use it down below. I would highly recommend making the most of it. Farfetch have an amazing selection of products. So, Nicholas Kirkwood is one of my favourite more premium footwear brands. Quite a lot. Um, I do have quite a few pairs of Nicholas Kirkwoods already. My, I call them my Aladdin shoes, my little um, pointy toed mules, which I get so much wear out of. My most worn, these are my second most worn, the pink. My most worn old school subscribers will know this are the gold ones. I find that metallics just go with everything. So these gold ones, they really are like Aladdin slippers. I get so much wear out of these. This is actually my second pair because because my first pair of these, Dickens actually um, shredded. <laughs> I forgot I actually still have my first pair here just for good measure. I say shredded, he just had um, a little bit of a nibble and you can see they're quite misshapen. I, I mentioned in a video a little while ago about our trip to Positano where they had more rain in one day than they normally have in a year and that was our day in Positano. I was wearing these shoes and my <clears throat> Valentinos that day. I was wearing these to begin with and then they just became so mushy <laughs> that I had to swap into my Valentinos. So that is why they are rather misshapen. I could probably wear these as my gardening shoes now. But I love them so much, I didn't want to get rid of them. And then my least worn, but I still love them, are these lilac shoes, are these lilac ones. So it's safe to say I love Nicholas Kirkwood mules. Pretty sure I have a couple more pairs I'm probably forgetting about, but also this pair of shoes in my collection that have got the gorgeous pearl in the heel. These are also from Nicholas Kirkwood. I don't find these as comfortable, I think because they have got, um, you know, your foot has to literally be the exact perfect size to be able to wear shoes like this. So to be honest, I mostly wear them for taking photos. We took some gorgeous pictures here in the dressing room last week and I wore these for those and I've always loved this pearl in the heel. So I've been looking for so long for the perfect, really wearable shoe with that pearl detail. Well, I'm pleased to say that is what I have here in my box. So here they are, the most beautiful summer sandal. They are like a rope sandal. I really, really hope they are comfortable. And as you can see, they have got the pearls in the heel. I am just obsessed with this design detail. I think it is so lovely. I cannot wait to try these on size wise. I went for my usual size, which is a 36. I'm really funny about new shoes on tables, bit of, bit of a um, suspicion. So I'm gonna try these on along with my first, my first outfit from H&M. So I placed a big H&M order the day that the Brock collection went live. That is the latest um, collaboration that H&M have done. I swear I clicked through the link about three minutes after the email came into my inbox and I still missed out on the dress of my dreams, which I'm so gutted about. It was the most perfect, I mean, I'm sure you guys probably know the one that I mean. Lydia did the most spectacular reel. She worked with them on the launch of this collection and it's the one that she's wearing at the beginning of the reel. That is literally my dream dress, but alas, I missed it. I have added it to my shop tagger 
my karma um and i'm just praying that it's going to come back in stock but let me show you what i did manage to get before it all <laughs> sold out just before i get changed this is a full length of the dress that i've been wearing today the beautiful one from muse and moda you can see the lovely design detail on the sleeves perfect smocked bodice and then it goes down and you do have a little slit in this fabric as well i just think it is ultra cute really easy to pull on and yeah just my perfect kind of style for a casual summer day and now here we are in the first dress from the H&M collection so similar to the dress that I was just wearing we have got a more kind of elasticated detail along the bodice here this material the pattern on this fabric is just so lovely and it's a really unusual style of pleating which I think is really beautiful you have got these ribbons with the bow tie detail on the shoulders which I love and then the skirt goes down into a kind of balloon style skirt so it's where the hem is actually sewn up underneath which if I'm totally honest, I kind of wish that it wasn't. I kind of wish it was a normal hem. There's something about the length that I'm finding not ultra flattering. And I think that if I actually cut along this line here or undo this stitching and let it down, then it'll be a really beautiful midi length and then it won't have this poof effect, which I don't know. I just feel like that's not particularly where I want to have poof within a silhouette. The shoes, I have never actually owned a pair of sandals like this. I feel like there was such a trend a couple of years ago where everyone was wearing like Grecian style sandals and I just never bought into the trend. I never really liked it and it has taken a very special pair like this to make me want to invest in the trend. However, we've got that problem that I mentioned in a video recently where I unboxed a net -a porter order and I had those Loewe sandals. I ended up sending them back for the reason that I felt like they chopped my legs off where they had such a, a blunt strap at the bottom of my leg before my foot. And I do wonder if these have that same problem. I always find that I just need to have like an open expanse <laughs> down to my toes in order for shoes to be flattering but then I'm not sure if I'm just a little bit blindsided based on the unflattering in my opinion length of the dress so I'm going to pop a different dress on from the H&M Brock Collective I'm going to have a little investigation of this when I've taken it off to make sure that I can let down the hem um, and if so I will definitely be keeping it here we have the next dress from the H&M Brock Collection and I have added my Loewe belt I just felt like it needed a little bit of cinching in around the waist to add to that silhouette so this is in that same kind of beautiful material with the gorgeous floral pattern I think these might be forget-me-nots. Really, really lovely. I I do really love this slightly old-fashioned um, kind of square neckline. It is one of my favourite necklines, if not my number one favourite neckline at the moment. Lengthwise, much better, much more flattering, and it definitely makes the sandals look better with a little bit more leg on show. And I really like the tie-in of the deeper brown from the belt with the sandals now you do have a little bit of elastication here on the sleeves so you can cinch them up a little bit if you like and it has done that peculiar ballooning effect which i'm sure was a very considered design detail it's just not one that i absolutely love on the skirt it just reminds me of oh, what was it like when i was about 19 when skirts it was really on trend for them to be ballooning like this and i wasn't aware that it had come back into fashion but nonetheless i do love the dress enough that I can I can deal with a balloon skirt um, with this beautiful dress I think it does I mean the silhouette is just absolutely lovely the neckline again you've got a little bit of pleating on the bodice which gives it such a lovely finish and given that it's so affordable it's definitely something that will be a wonderful addition to my summer wardrobe up next we have an absolute winner so this is actually not from the Brock collection but I added it to my order um, anyway and it is this absolutely gorgeous linen shirt dress which once again is seriously elevated with the addition of my fabulous Loewe belt and because of the length of this it looks brilliant with the sandals this is an absolute kind of summer holiday or just hot day pool day outfit perfection I've said many a time across the various summers that I have been vlogging or doing fashion videos that a linen shirt dress is such a classic piece it's something that is never going to go out of fashion it's something that you can quite easily spend a lot of money on I do have one from I think it's LK Bennett and I feel like I have another one as well oh I've got one from the white company too 
But to be honest, you can just get this one from H&M and no one would be able to tell that it's an affordable piece as opposed to one of those which probably cost at least 10 times the price to be honest. So essentially it is just an oversized shirt dress in a lovely linen material. Linen of course does crease very badly so you're going to want to invest in a steamer or a travel steamer for your holidays and I would recommend cinching in creating a little bit of um, shape with a belt and if you get a lot I'm gonna leave this one link down below again because I feel like it's definitely going to be the belt of the summer <laughs> it's one piece that I'm already so glad I invested in so the bottom button is actually here so you can't button it all the way down and then you do have a slit there as well so a really nice high slit I think it does look fantastic again with these sandals Linen being such a nice natural material is very breathable, so on warm days like today you're not going to be overheating. I really like these pockets, I like the open neckline. Sorry about Dickens howling in the background by the way, <laughs> not sure who's pestering him. And obviously beautiful to wear over a gorgeous swimsuit. If we do get to go away anywhere this summer then this will absolutely be coming in my suitcase. But also if you're wearing here in the UK as like an office outfit or if you're somewhere a little bit more relaxed and you've got some really pretty lingerie on, this is a bra that I got. I think this is from the Victoria's Secret Love and Lemons collection, but you know, if you fear that you might be flashing, then go for a really pretty lacy bra. Um, and then I've got my necklace from Missima on. So yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous, the kind of thing that I love to wear around the house, as long as I'm not doing any gardening, because it's too much to have to iron this after washing it regularly after, <laughs> after gardening. But, oops. Yeah, this is really beautiful. Definitely, definitely a winning outfit. Up next we have a little bit of a wild card, so this is, excuse my piles of clothing, I've actually just decided that I'm going to attempt to um, adjust the hemline of the first poofy balloon dress in a minute, I'm going to sit outside with my sewing machine and do it in a minute, so if you guys have also purchased the dress and have the same feelings about the um, hemline as I do, then you can continue watching and see whether what I do is going to make it any better, or if I completely <laughs> ruin the dress. But anyway, back to this outfit. So I've popped on my Mara Hoffman skirt, which I bought from Netta Porter a couple of weeks ago, with this corset style top from the Brock collection from H&M. It's a little bit wide for me in some respects. Like I feel like my my bodice or my rib cage almost needs to be a tiny bit wider, or maybe my boobs need to be a bit bigger in order for this to fit me perfectly. But I think what I can do is very easily just shorten these straps. And again, I'll show you with my sewing machine just how easy that is to do. Because once they are, can you see where I'm gripping it? Sorry, I'm showing you in this mirror. I feel like once it's about an inch shorter, this will fit me really nicely. If you do have a skirt that you like to wear a top tucked into, then I think it styles really gorgeously with that. And I would say it's slightly off-white, it's not pure white, I was going to try it on with some white linen shorts, but they're not quite the right colour. Um, and it's quite a peculiar shape as well, if I wear it outside the skirt, it's got like a scoop here, which is interesting, but here you can see it's got the most beautiful it's not, mm, actually, yeah, there is some boning in there, some bone detail. It really is very kind of Bridgerton inspired. Lovely material as well. It's quite a thick material. A really nice and unusual top from the high street. And then moving on to the final piece from my latest acquisition. And here is the final look. So the shorts are the new acquisition from H&M and I have paired with my lovely, really gorgeous, light, fresh, sorbet, lemon yellow shade blouse. This is actually from Reese. And then I've been wearing these a lot lately for just wearing around the house as a kind of alternative to slippers in summer. And these are from Havianas. Never know whether to say Havanas or Havianas but I should probably take that sticker off. They're just incredibly comfortable, great for house shoes, but you can, of course, wear them outside. And I just love things that I can so easily slip on. So this is a really nice summer day around the house, working from home, that kind of outfit. And I do love a classic pair of linen shorts. They have got a very comfortable elasticated waistband, a nice length, not too sheer, and pockets. So I'm gonna stay in this outfit for the rest of the afternoon. I've got quite a few emails I need to crack on with after this nice little break after lunch. A call later and then I'm going to, of course, carry on with some gardening. Okay, I've come outside with the dress and I have got my scissors and my unpickerer. And I'm going to start here where the seam is and just go through and unpick this stitching. 
After a little bit, I'll be able to see how much fabric we've got to play with. Chances are they've overlocked it, which is where they basically like cut and finish the seam. So I may not have any extra fabric to play with here, but it will give at least two inches more to the length, which and get rid of the balloon effect, which hopefully will be exactly what the dress needs to be a little bit more flattering on me. So for speed I've ended up just cutting the um, the fabric. I started off using the unpicker and to be honest it was just kind of ripping the fabric a little bit. So now you can see this seam here is where, or crease rather, this is where the balloon kind of puff used to be. So this two inches or so here, well probably just two inches, is what we have gained from doing this. So hopefully it'll work for the length. So what I now need to do is just create the tiniest little fold here and stitch it back up with my sewing machine shouldn't take too long to be honest it takes me longer to get the sewing machine out and set up than it does to actually do the sewing and then we should have our finished dress Well, it's certainly not my best work. I think that my textiles teacher from school would be absolutely appalled if she saw how I did that. I did no prep whatsoever. I didn't tack it. I didn't even iron it in place. And it is the world's most basic, um, just straight line stitch done on the machine. But it'll give me a really good idea as to how this is going to look with a more simple hem on the dress. Now what I would normally do is get the iron out and press the seam to give it that perfect finish. But I have the lazy girl hack to share with you. Just quickly, I did get um, a lot of questions last year when I was sewing my face masks about what uh, my sewing machine is. And I have always found this to be the best brand, Bernina. It is a Swiss brand, I believe. Ah, here we go. And the model is the Activa 220. Now, I have probably had this sewing machine for about 10 years. So I'm sure there are much better, more modern versions available out there now. But this one does the trick, does everything I need it to do all these different kinds of stitches and I find it really easy to use. So this is my sewing machine. I don't plan on getting a new one <laughs> unless this one completely breaks because it does, yeah, everything that I need it to do. And my trick is, of course, just to use my hair straighteners to do the seam on the dress. It just saves you getting the ironing board out and to be honest, I find it just so much easier. That's it, that literally took me, I've been filming for 1 minute 30 and that includes me talking to you earlier. So that probably took about 20 seconds. Now let's give it a try. I guess I'd better take the labels out seeing as I have completely hacked this dress. Wouldn't it be funny if I returned it and no one even noticed that I'd done a DIY job on it? Oh my goodness, this is so much better. I now absolutely love this dress. H&M, why did you do that strange bubble hemline? Honestly, this is so, so, so much better. Just a really simple hem. And you really cannot tell. Gosh, I need some tan on my legs. You really cannot tell that this was a DIY jobby, even though that took me probably 20 minutes in total. I am, so, ooh, I don't think I realized those pockets. I'm so happy that I did that. It has made it the perfect length, just below the knee is my kind of favorite elegant midi, leg, midi length dress, midi dress, midi dress, leg length. <laughs> we got there eventually. And it just makes it hang so much more nicely. What I'm gonna do is whiz the straightener over these as well, ultra quickly, because I'm pretty sure these have probably got some plastic <laughs> in the, um, in the ribbon. I wish I hadn't put away my sewing machine so quickly because I would actually also be tempted to change the ribbon detail as well. 
I just don't think the black ribbon goes particularly well with the dress. I might have a little look online to see if I can find something in more of like a greeny tone. And then it really will be a Josie bespoke H&M dress. But yeah, for less than half an hour's work, I have managed to hack my way into the perfect summer day dress. I felt like it was a little bit cooler outside to pop my shorts back on, so I've just got changed back into my Varley leggings. Um, they are in this most amazing kind of sage green colour, which I really, really like, and they are super comfortable, just wearing around the house in the evening. Kept my Reese blouse on. Now I have the joyous task of taking out the garden bins because our bins get collected. Sorry, this is so boring. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna stop this sentence right here. I just made a lovely kind of veggie pasta for dinner and I've just done all the washing up while Charlie is doing some garden maintenance jobs. It is a really lovely evening, sun's just gone down and I thought I would just sign off for the evening. I think it's been a pretty long vlog with all of the clothing and trying on etc. This blouse is actually very sheer. Never mind. Um, so darlings, I really hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, you know the drill, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. As a reminder, it is totally free to subscribe. You literally just get a little notification when I've uploaded a video and it would truly mean the world to me. So darlings, enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you very soon in the next vlog. Bye.